Hi guys, welcome to the last lecture of module one, um, the multidimensional approach to intellectual disability diagnosis, lecture seven. Um, the purpose of this lecture, again, is gonna kind of try to tie everything together, really look at all the information that we have and how it's used um, to help with classification. And that's gonna really help us plan for supports um, and support planning throughout the life, um, throughout the lifespan. We're gonna relook at that multidimensional framework or that constitutive definition and also mention some other classification systems that are used. Um, it's really important to note that this multidimensional approach to, di di to, to diagnosis um, really is applied after the operational definition is applied. So remember those three criteria that need to be met or those boxes that need to be checked. And that first one um, being deficits in intellectual functioning, usually a score of 70 or, be up or below, plus or minus the standard error of measure, deficits in adaptive behavior, which are those three domains, that conceptual, social, and practical domains, and then also um, making sure the age of onset is before age 18. So we'll kind of go over this stuff. So I want you guys to kind of think about what's the utility or value of putting people into further categories once they receive a diagnosis and applying this multidimensional framework or another classification system. Um, this, you know, these questions on this slide here can really be a nice springboard for some of you guys um, for your last discussion post for this module. Um, again, of course, with um, support from the readings and references that are assigned for this week. But some of the benefits um, of further, of, of further categor categorization or classification once you have a diagnosis is that it helps extend a functional use of the diagnosis. So really helps um, with that support planning. Um, further research and developing treatments for this population, which then can impact funding resources. Um, also, it really helps create a taxonomy for understanding what things are and what things are not, and really helping us understand subtle differences within, within groups. Um, and again, you guys can kind of think of some other ones. So then I want you to think, what are the weaknesses of putting individuals with intellectual disabilities into categories? Um, a couple might be um, overstigmatization or possible overdiagnosis, um, comparing adults to children. So this will happen sometimes with adults with intellectual disabilities. Um, sometimes those mental ages, even though we know those aren't good, those are not good things to use, but people might liken um, an individual to children. So say, for example, an individual is 30 years of age chronologically, but they might say, oh, well, they're functioning like an eight-year-old in this domain. Um, and again, sometimes that over-individualization um, can really lead us down some rabbit holes and really just take, you know, allow us to lose sight of what's really important, which is planning for supports. Thinking about um, the value of categorization, I think it's important to consider what does the use of a multidimensional system of classification add to the classification of individuals with intellectual disabilities and other diagnoses or really specific etiologies. So intellectual disabilities and Down syndrome versus someone that has an intellectual disability and an autism spectrum disorder. Or um, the etiology maybe is prodder willy or having intellectual disabilities and um, other mental health concerns. The support planning um, is really going to look different for someone that has an intellectual disability and an autism spectrum disorder versus somebody with an intellectual disability and Down syndrome. And it really, again, is important to use um, a, the multidimensional framework or another classification system that looks at all those areas of human functioning and strengths and weaknesses within the, those, um, across each of those domains. It really helps with the individualization piece, um, depending on the etiology um, or other comorbid disorders um, with intellectual disability. And then last, I want you guys to think about um, how does the use of this of a multidimensional system of classification for intellectual disability apply to an individual's um, or apply to individuals as a whole their development across the lifespan? Um, we know that um, intellectual disability is a pervasive disorder. It's something that you know there's no cure for intellectual disability. Generally speaking, we talked a little bit about how there are some things like PKU where we've been able to um, eliminate the effects if certain things are done, but in general. The disability is, um, it's a developmental disability, so it um, accompanies the entire lifespan. 
And an individual's needs, um, strengths, and area and areas of um, deficit are going to change um, as they get older um, and as new challenges are presented. So if someone's leaving high school and going to college, and then college you may be one to enter the workforce, or say if a medical condition arises. Um, the use of a multidimensional framework really helps recenter us and continuously be evaluating and looking at the strengths and weaknesses across all the areas of human functioning so we can be more effective in our support planning. So some other commonly used systems, um, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manuals um, put out by um, the American Psychological Association. Um, we're currently in the fifth iteration, so the DSM-5. Um, also, um, the ICD classification system, and this is used internationally much more. Um, and the DSM-5 really aligns a lot more with um, the DSM-5 um, in terms of when you're looking at it compared to um, past iterations of the DSM. Additionally, if you're um, talking about education, um, federal, um, there's, you know, federal classification systems um, that are more broad and then um, depending on the state that you live in, they'll interpret those federal definitions a little bit differently. Additionally, the Developmental Disabilities Administration, both on the state and federal level, have their own classification systems, and so as does Medicaid and Medicare services. And these are really state-specific and really help to dictate um, funding um, and available resources to help with support planning. So again, we've seen this a lot and again so it's really important to have a good understanding of this multidimensional classification system or it's also referred to um, as like the constitutive definition of intellectual disability and remember that the purpose of this is really looking um, at the disability through the lens of what are the pattern and intensity of support needs and what supports are needed to help maximize human functioning and maybe and hopefully mediate those deficits that present as a product of having an intellectual disability. And there's five different dimensions. As a review, the first one is intellectual abilities, um, and this is measured through the use of standardized IQ tests. Um, adaptive behavior, looking at strengths and weaknesses across all of those domains of adaptive behavior, those social, practical, and conceptual skills, and using strengths within um, adaptive behavior to help mediate weaknesses. Um, I've mentioned a couple times before that a common misconception with this population is global deficits in adaptive behavior, and that's certainly not the case. Um, all individuals have tons of strengths um, or have varying levels of strengths across this domain, and it's really important to have an understanding of their strengths in addition to their weaknesses so they can be used um, to make things better. The third is health. <clears throat> And this um, pertains to physical health, mental health, and also positive health practices, so things that help promote health. And additionally, this really um, pertains to the etiology, which we talked about in the last lecture. So what are all the different causes or reasons, whether they're more biological or environmental um, in nature, um, for intellectual disability or re possible reasons for having the intellectual disability? And then participation. Um, and this pertains to the roles and interactions in the areas of home living, work, education, leisure, um, and also additional spiritual and cultural activities that an individual um, might be participating in or might want to participate in. And then the last area is the context. So really important to take this into account. And this really focuses on those interrelated conditions within which people live their everyday lives. Um, and these can be both environmental and personal factor personal factors rather, um, and so really important to take all these things into account. Alrighty, so you guys have seen this a lot. <laughs> You've seen it many, 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 many times. Um, and it's really important, again, to look at, to really have, again, a good understanding for what all of these things are and what the role of supports are in maximizing human functioning. And I know I've said it a lot, so it's really important that you understand it. Um, and again, this is, represents the constitutive definition of intellectual disability. And this framework recognizes that the manifestation of intellectual disability involves the dynamic reciprocal engagement among intellectual abilities, adaptive behavior, health, participation, context, and individualized supports that help maximize human functioning. And this is again the lens that's kind of, or an overlay um, that's put 
over a person's life and experiences and wants and needs when you're support planning once an individual has um, an intellectual, diagno intellectual disability diagnosis. So make sure you have a really good understanding of this and its role um, in diagnos in diagno for diagnostic purposes in classification and supports planning. And let me know if you have any questions or still aren't clear on anything. All right, so additional advantages of the proposed multidimensional classification system, it really, again, extends the functional use of the um, diagnosis. It establishes a common language and increases reliability in diagnosis. Um, it gives added meaning to subtypes or subgroups within, um, we know that for individuals that receive the diagnosis. And again, it really um, helps us appropriately match supports um, um, for funding. Um, again, overuses, again, it can lead to a decrease, um, or um, rather, it, le it helps with um, misuses of classification um, and can hopefully lead to a decrease in stigmatization because it focuses so much on, ra rather than focusing on what are the deficits a person has, it focuses on um, what supports are needed to make things better or what's missing from this person's environment that they're not able to access certain areas of human functioning. And this current um, multidimensional framework put out by the I AAIDD really establishes the parameter for best practice and classification. Um, it follows professional practice for assessment guidelines, and it's strongly urged that professionals use this, um, whether you're engaging in di um, diagnosis, classification, or planning for supports with this population. So I have really enjoyed our first module together. Um, I hope you guys have learned a lot and really, again, have a good understanding for um, what an intellectual disability is and what it is not. And so please ask me if you have any questions at all. Um, again, it's been fun. And I will leave you with Lionel. He didn't make as many appearances as I thought. Um, so he says he hopes you guys learned a lot as well. Again, reach out if you have any questions and look forward to module two, where we'll talk about developmental disabilities specifically the developmental disabilities waiver that Wyoming has. Um, there's a documentary you guys get to watch, and so we really get to start getting into some of the more fun stuff um, as opposed to just making sure you understand what an intellectual disability is. Have a great day or night, depending on when you're watching this, and I'll talk to you guys later.